check out this crazy harvest of sunchokes. All right, guys, Papa Pepper back once again on the Abundant Harvest Homestead. This sunchoke harvest was absolutely insane. We averaged, uh, for what we planted, about four pounds per square foot. Now, they did branch out from the area they were planted in, but for what we planted, we averaged four pounds per square foot. That is absolutely insane. A hundred pound harvest off of planting 25 square feet. Check this out. So this is the area we planted the sunchokes in. If you see that these posts here, if I measure them, this one's about four and a half feet. There's four feet over there. Here's five feet. And and this one, it's more like five feet. So it's about five feet by five feet square. What we actually planted, that's a rough estimate, but I'm gonna call it 25 square feet. So it's pretty much a five by five section, 25 square feet. We got pretty much 100 pounds of sun chokes because remember these buckets do weigh something, but we replanted some of these too. All right guys, Papa Pepper back once again, the Abundant Harvest Homestead today. We're gonna check out how our sunchokes did. This is our second year growing them in this uh, area. I believe last year we planted like 20 or less and they did really good for us. So this is our main sunchoke growing area. We're gonna get down there beneath the soil this year, see what's going on, grab our harvest, and then actually too, we're gonna take a number of these and besides the ones we're keeping to eat, we're gonna offer them up for sale in our Homesteaders Co-op store. We'll have a link in the description and this will give you guys an opportunity. I know a lot of people have been asking about these sunchokes. We've made a number of videos on them and there's some people who definitely wanna get their hands on some. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna break off a portion of what we find and have those available to you guys too. I'll go over that stuff at the end of this video, but for now, we're just gonna dig it. Sunchokes, right? Ooh, look at that! Tomorrow it's gonna get down into freezing temps, but today we still got the prairie lizards hanging out in our garden. Let's talk a little bit more about the sunchokes. Sunchokes are also called Jerusalem artichokes. They're a member of the sunflower family. People grow them primarily as a food source because of the edible tubers that they put forth beneath the surface. They do get incredibly tall. You probably can't even see. You probably can't even see the top of that one. But um, beautiful yellow flowers, very striking, very large. Animals will eat these too. Our sheep and our goats, we had some out in the pasture. They nibbled them down to nothing. But underneath the surface, I'll show you what's going on so you guys can get a little better look and feel for these. So down here, if I pull this up, oh, Whoa. a whole section of the soil comes up with it. And all over the place, they shoot out kind of these long runners. And at the end of these long runners, look at how long that is, there's a little globule, a little nodule, a little whatever cluster this is. And what this does is next year, it'll shoot out from all these and grow the next year's uh, crop. So from all over the place, this is just shooting out all these little guys. And that's one reason they can really spread. Some people consider them evasive because they can move so far and shoot these things feet under the ground that they wind up all over the place. We have been able to do a pretty good job keeping them somewhat contained in our garden. There's definitely those who would say, do not plant this in your garden. Um, I'm not one of those, but you gotta be able to kind of keep an eye on it and check it out. Um, you may have noticed before, I've got the T-post in the corner of this thing. And some of these, like, it's got all this stuff growing down in here. I'm just gonna take this and bury it for next year. Um, this part here. And that'll be part of next <laughs> year's crop. So, um, one thing about these guys is they can put forth like 10 times the harvest of what you plant. So if you plant a pound, you can wind up with 10 pounds. 
if you plant uh, 10 pounds, you can wind up with 100 pounds or so. That's kind of the rough estimate that people give. We're going to dig through this stuff and see how many we can find. Um, oh, but as I was mentioning, because they get so tall, I put T-posts in the corner of this section and then put some wire wrapped around it to keep them all standing up so they don't just sprawl everywhere. Wow, guys, that was about 45 minutes of work for all of us. Um, I got about two and a half five gallon buckets myself. The area between the uh, tee posts is only like five feet by five feet. So we had about 25 square feet that we planted. But if you look at how much we dug, it's like twice that much almost. It's almost like 100 square feet or yeah, even more than twice. Yeah, but I got this bucket full. Sweet pepper got that bucket. Who is this one? Red pepper? Scarlet. Red pepper. Monster truck. Pinky pepper. Rocking out almost a tall one. Here's my partial one. And there's another full one there. So we will, uh, what we're going to do right now is rake all this back together. Hold on, stop. We're going to rake it all back in the middle. Then we're going to remulch the paths. Then we're going to put the rocks back. We got all that mulch there. Nice, that worked out. We're going to put all this in the middle and uh, get it for next year. And then also, we want some here for next year. So when we rake it all in the middle, we're just going to stuff a couple extra ones down in there. We definitely missed some. They'll be growing back, but we want to start over again. Make sure that some of these stay in the soil for, uh, for next year to come in. All right, here we go. So now, we're at the point we have our mulched path back, all the way around. There's probably still sun choke tubers hidden underneath here. We'll find them in the spring. As they come out, we'll just keep them picked. But this is where I'm going to replant now. So some of these, when we pulled up the root systems, they had all sorts of tubers worked in them that wasn't going to break out. So we'll use those, and then I'll take some out of the buckets and use them as well. So I'm just going to bury a couple, add in some stuff, and then we'll take a peek at what we got. Well, guys, if we combine them all, we have four or five gallon buckets. This one was mine. Just completely fine. Or a picture Come right over here, lady. Take a peek at those buckets, sir. Whoa, nice guys. Those are some good buckets full. What do you think of that harvest? A pretty good harvest for us. That was like 25 square feet of what we planted. Yeah. What do you think about that little girl? Pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. So, wow. Really did anything. <laughs> that is absolutely crazy, guys. And here's some washed off ones. So some of us are going to nibble them up. Anyone like to nibble them? Oh, hey. Mama. Mama. Happy. You want? I don't eat some jokes. So, mm. monster truck likes them quite a bit. 
Yeah, I already some. have my I think I prefer them raw or just mixed in with stuff. I like them raw. And I think we could dice them real fine and like add them to like a corn salad or something. I bet you they'd be super tasty. Yeah. How are you liking that bugger? Probably good for salads. Sure. I, so. I, I already have Do you want me to eat it or are you going to eat it? You know him. Do you want me to finish yours, John? My belly's growling. Oh man, I apparently didn't have enough washed up. No, I don't want no. Have some kale. <laughs> you like this for kale? Mmm. Just nibbling on them raw is a great way to get exposed to them and just start using them. I would say they're somewhat similar to like a kohlrabi too. So anything you're used to kind of using a kohlrabi for, you could probably use these for. But what are you doing? You done? You're still nibbling. You're done nibbling. And you're still nibbling. Done. You done? Yeah. Okay, I'll nibble them up. You gotta finish his. Alright, well let's take a uh, cover photo and then I'll talk about offering these up in the store. Gids, you guys spent more than an hour harvesting all that and putting it all back in order. How do you feel? Tired. And we have a chicken I will, and he kept me up like the whole night. And then tonight, he's not gonna keep me up. <laughs> You're gonna be too tired for the little cheek, uh, chip, the little chick chip. peeping. Yeah, I'm so glad we named him Peeps. Yeah, lives up to his name, huh? You found another one, eh, bugger? <laughs> All right, guys, excellent oh. harvest. Thanks for your work. I appreciate it, guys. And now you've reaped what you've sown, and you've sown again for next year. Hello, my name's Hello. Woo! Hip hip hooray! Hip hip hooray! Hip hip hooray! Hip hip hooray! <laughs> I don't do Alright guys, Papa Pepper here. We're going to weigh myself and then we're going to weigh me with those sun chokes. So with the clothes I got on right now, 198 pounds. Move forward for a minute. Show that 198. No, move there. Now if you can see 198. So I'm grabbing the first two buckets of sun chokes back up. They're heavy. Oops, now I got to weigh it again. Coming off. Okay, zero. So now... 249. Wow, 249 from 198. And the second time, with the other two buckets, is going to be 249.5. Wow, those buckets are pretty much dead on. So guys, that is absolutely crazy. First of all, because we filled these buckets pretty evenly, apparently. Because the one was 51 pounds worth, the other one 51 and a half pounds worth. We just got 102.5 pounds of sunchokes. Now, I did not weigh a bucket though, so we'll just call it roughly 100 pounds of sunchokes from planting 25 square feet. I don't know about you guys, but that's absolutely crazy to me that you could take. And we didn't plant it that heavily, I didn't think. Um, wow. So it's pretty much a 5x5 five five section, 25 square feet. We got pretty much 100 pounds of sun chokes because remember these buckets do weigh something, but we replanted some of these too. So although it did take a while to um, harvest for us, although it did take a bit for us, you know, to do the work, we were together as a family. It was me and my kids doing it. That is a crazy harvest. Um, I will show you guys the... Uh, the final part of this kind of at the post office so you guys know what we're dealing with for sharing these with others we're going to be eating a lot of these ourselves but definitely if you guys want to get started on growing your own sun chokes we will give you the opportunity and we will be more than happy to send some of these over to you guys that is crazy though wow that's like four pounds a square foot that's nuts i mean i know they went outside of that area we had to harvest a larger area that we planted but we only planted 25 square feet that's crazy all right, guys, Papa Pepper here to wrap up this video. So, sun chokes, right? I stopped at the post office, and I took just a quick look at their actual uh, pricing for their flat rate boxes. So that said, here's what I've decided to do. If you check this out, this is the priority mail small flat rate box, okay? This one's the priority mail medium rate box. Obviously, this one's only so thin, you know, less than two inches thick, maybe an inch and a half on the inside. And this one's much, much thicker. So a bunch of the small ones from these buckets 
ones that can fit in easily. We'll be going in those small boxes. For the bigger ones, we'll be using the fatter ones that wouldn't fit in that small box. Um, what I did is I filled up these boxes just to kind of take a peek. If I take a peek here on the scale, what the small flat rate box holds is going to be apparently just over a pound. If I find out what the large flat rate box holds, it's apparently just over seven pounds. So I'm going to try to keep that consistent. Or if somebody decides to order the small box, it'll be about a pound. Medium box, about seven pounds. The flat rate shipping costs are going to be $7.90 for the small one and $14.35 for the medium. Now, I may be able to, rather than going priority on the flat rate, I may be able to go regional, and that could be less, it could be more. So I'm just going to use this as a bottom line to figure things out. Since I already charge on the Homesteaders Co-op $4 for shipping, 8 minus 4 is about 4 14 minus 4 is about 10 so I'm taking into consideration that $4 is already included in the actual shipping cost. So to the price of what I'm charging for these, we're just going to add 4 to the small box and 10 to the other box. When I dump this out, this one pound of small ones, it seems to be about 15 or so of these little sun chokes, okay? Um, you know, that could be broken into a couple when you're planting, but we got about 15. When I dumped out this box, obviously they're, they're bigger ones, but we get about 40 or so uh, medium and big ones in there, about 15 small in there for that pound or for that 7 pounds. That said, when I list these, I'm going to list the small box for 10 bucks, and I'm going to mix list the medium box for $40. If you compare this to what these things are going for on Etsy or things like that, I know 40 bucks may seem like a lot, but you got to remember $10 of that's shipping included in that, so I'm willing to give you seven pounds of sun chokes if you want for really 30 bucks once you subtract out the extra 10, the actual cost once you subtract shipping. If you compare that to what they're going for on Etsy or other things, that's actually a pretty, a really good price compared to a lot of the people out there. Again, we're just trying to bless people and be able to share this stuff, but also put something in our pocket and make it worth uh, worthwhile. In the end, I would rather have a, a friend than a profit. I'd rather have someone um, you know, obviously it's voluntary if you guys order from us or not, but I'd rather be able to bless you in the process, cut you a deal compared to what a lot of the people out there are doing, but also make it financially beneficial for us. There's a number of these that we're going to be eating too, but as I list these, I'm going to start off with an amount that's definitely going to be able to be covered. So there's going to be a threshold, there's going to be a certain quantity available of the medium boxes, a certain quantity available of the um, small boxes. If perchance they sell out, I will reevaluate in the very near future um, and see how many more I think we could actually put out and, and ship to people. So if you go and follow the link in the description below, try to order some sun chokes from us. If they're sold out, you know, check back the next day or something like that. The quantity may be re-upped. I should be getting this up here Thursday night, this uh, video. I'll have these live on the uh, site before I do that. And then um, Monday will probably be our first shipment. So, I mean, we may even, you know, fulfill whatever orders we have before then. Probably not, but if we do, you can expect probably, you know, sometime Sunday if we sell it before that, I'll be re-upping the quantities because I'll be boxing them up to go and just kind of see. But I know a lot of you guys have been asking about these. Like I said, I want to be able to put these in other people's hands. We've definitely got enough that we can eat a ton of these and still have some to share. To me, to plant 25 square feet and come up with 100 pounds of harvest is absolutely fantastic. And that's the thing, too. These guys will usually 10x for you. So what that means is in a situation like this, if you plant a pound, you should be able to get about 10 pounds next year. If you plant 7 pounds, you should be able to get about 70 pounds, um, which is crazy to think about. I mean, that's pretty much three 5-gallon buckets was the weight for us because they were about 25 pounds a piece, where if you planted this, you know, one 7-pound box, you could be able to pull in three 5-gallon buckets of harvest next year. And the goal is to put these things into people's hands so that way when they order once, they can just keep reproducing them for the rest of their lives and never need them again and have enough to eat, have enough to share, have enough to always grow some. I'm definitely passionate about trying to get things into people's hands that they can just kind of keep that ball rolling. Where if you order something from us, hopefully you only need to order once. Remember, these are things that we're propagating on our own, saving seeds on our own. You guys can do the same. And um, to me, that's just exciting. Um, you know, try to work yourself out of a job. Um, of course, we're always going to be exploring new things too. 
and stuff. And there's going to be a lot of stuff we get listing here on the Homesteaders Co-op soon. I've got some germination tests for catnip going on right now. The Yuruzun, um Japanese wing beans. Um, we should have mosaic long beans soon and some other stuff. Just uh, passion fruit as well. So... I don't know, we'll see what we get up by the end of the year, but I know a lot of people were, you know, curious about these. And remember, the sooner you ship them, or the sooner you uh, purchase them, the better. If you're somewhere where you can get them in the soil, I would definitely recommend that. Um, if you're not able to, storage is key for any ones you're not going to be eating. Um, so the fridge, something like that, they should be able to last till spring if you can't plant this uh, fall or winter yet. And then um, these are just unwashed, too. They're just straight out of the soil. I'm not trying to disturb them very much. I'm not trying to mess with them. I want them to be as, as unmessed with as possible. That way they've got the best chance of, of keeping for you guys. And the sooner you order them, the sooner you get them in your hands, the less time I got to store them. But then you guys, like I said, get them in the soil if you can, and they'll come to life in the spring. Or if you're not able to, find a good place to store them. Um, for some people, that's just going to be putting them in the fridge or something until spring. And we've done that too, where they've lasted for months in the, in the fridge. So guys, that's the end of this video. I just wanted to make sure to be able to share you know, this information with you guys before I put this up. Hopefully that helps. Hopefully that puts some things in the uh, perspective for you guys. Um, thanks for all the support. Next order on the Homesteaders Co-op store should get us over $1,000 gross for the year, which, you know, isn't a lot in the grand scheme of things, but considering this is the first time we're really running anything, sharing stuff online, um, that's pretty cool. And I mean, I've sold some books through it too, and the, um, you know, shipping's included in that gross number, but, um, Wow, you know, a thousand bucks, a lot of that just uh, blessing people with stuff from our garden and giving them the power to kind of just keep that ball rolling. So we're excited about that. Thank you guys all for everything. If you guys are still here at the end of this video, thank you much. We will see you next time. Papa out.